that would be in the academy. I'm good. I'm good. I'm staying in Bridgeport, which was a good thing. It was a blessing to me because um, I'm able to do more with youth programs than I would with the same program. Um, so with that said, I did six months in the academy. From six months into the academy, I went to my FGO training, which is field training, uh, which you're with a seasoned officer, a veteran officer, and teaches you the ropes. Uh, classroom is all great and fine, whatnot, but uh, but having hands on out in the street is better than sitting in the classroom with them and, and uh, the instructor telling you how to act and what to do. Um, so after I was done with the FTO, I went directly into housing. Um, so I worked in PT, I worked in the Marina, I worked in the Greens, I worked in the Terrace. So I, w I worked in all of the housing projects. Um, you guys were even bored then. Uh, so I know, probably I know some of your parents because we hung out, you know, we played basketball or whatever. Um, I'm not a good basketball player. I can dance, I can okay. dance, but I'm not a good basketball player. Okay. I can't even get mm -hmm. to do thing in the hoop. <laughs> so, um, so with that said, uh, I was getting a little tired of, of working in housing. I wanted to do more. I wanted to expand. Um, so then I went into a position was open for narcotics advice. I decided to go into narcotics advice. I worked as an undercover for a bit. Um, I guess I did a good job with that. So the state police asked me to join them. And that's exactly what I did. I worked for the state police for a little bit as an undercover also. Um, and my father always said to me, do me a favor. If anyone from Narcotics and Vice ever approaches you to come and do undercover work, don't do it. Well, me being an adrenaline junkie, I decided to just go ahead and not say anything to that. <laughs> um, so I did really well with both city narcotics and state narcotics. And then my dad and I went to a retirement party. And at that retirement party, my bosses were like, oh yeah, your daughter, she's great. And he's like, what do you mean she's great? Oh yeah, she's great. She's, you know, great undercover. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm going, no, no, don't say nothing. At that point, my father found out. I'm like, all right, cat's out of the bag. I was an undercover officer for a while. Right, went back to patrol, went back to housing. Um, did that for a little bit again. And then a position opened up as a, uh, it was called the, um, neighborhood, we changed names so many times, neighborhood enforcement team. I was one of the first in that team. It was a strategic team for the city um, and for the department. So when the mayor called, when somebody called the mayor about, let's say, um, drugs or prostitution or guns or whatever, they would call us and we would focus on that area for about a month. Um, and then, so we would handle that for, for the mayor, for the chief. Um, then I decided I wanted to be the first. Mm. And then here we go with the first. Okay. The uh, position that opened up, they were putting together their first ESU uh, unit, which is the emergency services unit, which is a SWAT team. I decided that I wanted to try out. And I tried out. I beat out a couple captains, a couple lieutenants mm. that were all guys. I was the only female. And to this day, I still hold that rank as being the only female city and state SWAT operator. Mm. Um, and I enjoy it. And uh, <laughs> those are fun times. That's a lot different from regular patrol, patrol training. This is fun. You get to work with a bunch of people throughout the state and you get to work with big, high powered guns. And, and um, I, I like to drive the, uh, the armored car. That's fun, except not in ice, because it doesn't stop very well. <laughs> um, I am in charge of the virtual police honor guard unit. I don't know if you guys have been at any of our parades. Please start off with the flags. Well, that's Honor Guard. It's a very prestigious unit. Um, I run it. Um, I have 12 other guys with me that, that are in the unit. Um, again, I'm the only female for that unit. Uh, we used to have a couple other ladies, but they decided to venture off to other things. Um, I still, I'm still with them. I've been with them for 14 years, 14, 15 years. And uh, we go to Washington, D.C. every year. We uh, participate in the um, Week, National Police Week in Washington. Um, so we do that, and uh, we stand at caskets at law enforcement funerals. 
uh, whether it's for retirees or those uh, that killed in the, uh, the line of duty. So we have traveled around pretty much the U.S. attending all these funerals. Um, not only do I do that for the for the department, but I also sing. So I do a lot of traveling. Oh, yeah. um, I sing at a lot of these funerals or special events. Um, I am the city's uh, national anthem singer, so I sing for the city. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, and then that's how I ended up meeting my other half. My, you guys know nothing about this group because you guys are way too young. But my other half is Walt Anderson. Um, he's on a bunch of of uh, like Spotify and all that. Um, but he's the lead singer for Cool in the Gang. He took over for JT Taylor. You guys are going, who's Cool in the Gang? 70s band from back in the day. So he took over for JT when he decided to retire. He's been with us for six, seven years now. So I travel with the gang and him. Oh, wow. Um, which is fun. Um, except when you're only in these really nice parts right. of the country and you're only there for three days and you gotta go. Um, so we've, uh, we've done stuff together. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I'm also part of a traveling gospel choir, so I travel a lot too with that. And and the rest of the stuff is more youth oriented. So my office is over on Sylvan Avenue, and that's community services. That's okay. where I'm. That's where I'm detailed at. All right. <laughs> so there, everyone calls us for things, whether it's for um, school presentations like this, camp presentations, youth organizations. Um, uh, camps, we do uh, food drives, toy drives, coat drives, you name it, we do. Um, in fact, September 19th, remember this guys, Okay. we have a, we're going to be at the park behind Tisdale School, uh, okay. I think it's Johnson Oak Park, Johnson Oak Park, uh, from 10 to 3, free haircuts, Free COVID testing, okay. um, census, that's more for your parents or your guardians, um, and a hot dog and a hamburger. So everything is free. September and 19th? September 19th. Okay. Everybody remember that. I would like for everybody to go. We go together. Yeah, and we're getting, uh, we're going to have coats too. Brand spanking okay. coats with hats and, and gloves. So come on down. First come, first serve, right? And remember, wear your mask. Um, yes, yes. But that's pretty much everything that I do. I'm also a wish creator for Make-A-Wish. You guys know anything about Make-A-Wish? Anyone ever heard? Yeah. <clears throat> Make-A-Wish is, is we deal with terminally ill kids that want to yeah. go somewhere. Let's say they want to go to Disney or they want a pool or they want um, a special bedroom or they want to meet a celebrity or a sports star. <clears throat> we make it happen. But you gotta be sick. I already saw your eyes over the line. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Ones that are plastic, um, that are not so heavy, um, but these are heavy. The M4s are heavy. Um, when I have my black jacket on, which yes. is, it's an additional 60 pounds to 70, mm. and that's just my, that's just mine. Mine is cut to me. So the guys have four, four um, um, pouches for all their M, um, M4 rounds and their and their uh, 45 radio and all that minus cuts a half that so it's like balls, two man. two and then the rest are in my pockets but yeah it depends right any other question nobody had a question go ahead katie okay oh, i think 
I can't. Why did you become a police officer? That was your question? Yeah. Uh, my dad is a police officer. Um, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. He wanted me to be an attorney. Um, I took law for a little bit. Didn't care for it so much. Um, when I went to the academy, I had no choice but to learn Connecticut law. And it was like cramming eight years of, of law down your throat in six months. So no choice. <laughs> and, that, and then the other thing is that I like working with kids and I like working with people. You have to have a heart for that. You have to have a heart to work with people and and kids because if you, you can't work with people and you can't work with kids, it's no good, bro. point of being I didn't even know that was you over there. I was wondering where you She should be done in a little bit. To my, to my recruits when they come in, I tell them, if you don't have yeah, a heart for this, I might need you, you next week with a couple of cats I like music. Do me a favor and so I'm going to holler at you. I always tell them that because I don't have time for it. And I'm an, I'm an instructor as well. Okay. I am a um, instructor, not in this academy anymore. I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, I taught ground fighting. I taught uh, defensive tactics, hand-in-hand -hand yeah, combat, good. short people Question. combat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you name it, I've taught it. Handcuff and baton, um, OC spray. Um, I teach all that. But now I teach at the State Police Academy. So I teach up there to th those recruits. Again. I always tell them, you have to have the heart to become a police officer because it's important that you serve your community or your state, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And if you're gonna be nasty, there's no point. You gotta mm -hmm. go. Cause it's a long 25 years on a job to be miserable. Okay, yes. Hey, what, what kind of police officer are you? I'm, I'm, a, regu I'm a regular police officer, but I work out of uh, community services. 19 I, I years, think, it's time for me to- I think, I think he's one of the police officers that, you know that work on computers? They go on that, um, yeah. they, like, they just, you just go walk in the, um, the police academy or something or the police station mm -hmm. and they, they just work oh, computers. Oh, yeah. I will blow up a computer okay. because I'm not good with computers. Okay. I have to call my IT person at least once a week telling him what did I just do. I'm not good with computers. My eight-year-old son, he's the one that walks me through a lot of the computer stuff. I'm not good with it at all. So no, I deal more with the hands-on stuff, the, the planning for the city. Um, events for the city as well as the department. Any, any other questions? Huh? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? I know you guys got questions. Ask me anything. They're a little shy, officer uh, Sandy. Okay. Maybe I can shy. <laughs> no questions? Especially for the females. Alright, what about my ladies? Yeah, exactly. We got Have two. You ever had to use a gun? Oh. Um, I've taken it out. Yeah, I've never shot it. And one thing that I want to make very, very clear here, when we put on this uniform, yes. all right, when this uniform goes on, we kiss our families goodbye, but we don't know if we're coming home. Mm. And at the same time, we don't know if we have to pull that trigger. Right. And the thing is, it doesn't matter whether, um, you know, it's, if, Let's say something happens to that point and um, it, it stays in somebody's head. It's not that easy. And the reason why I say that, I am also a state peer support counselor for law enforcement um, or for first responders as well as veterans. So there's a lot of PTSD, right? And there's a lot of things that they talk about that reoccur. You close your eyes and that's all you see. Um, I never personally had to take it out and use it. Have I taken it out? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> did it stop whatever? Absolutely. Um, but there is not a day that I leave my house and then I say, I want to go shoot somebody. That's not the case. One, there's too much paperwork. <coughs> Two, I don't think I can live with myself harming somebody else. And that's just me. And I'm sure that's with them, all the other police officers that I work with. But that was a good question. I like Any other questions? No, you got one. Hey, got one? When, um, when, when did you first start? When did I first start? Yeah. 19 years ago. <laughs> June 24th, 2001. Oh, yeah? Oh. Yeah. I'm only going back and forth. That's why she said she's been doing it longer than y'all oh, been born. Yeah. Uh -huh. for, for a, a very top high person um, 
um, that works in Washington, D.C. So whenever he needs assistance, I go out to D.C. Um, he used to be he used to be a mayor in in uh, New York, and uh, but uh, but that's whenever needed. So, um, but yeah, that's very important. Any other one? You guys got questions. You guys can okay. talk about what's going on today. Seriously. <laughs> like I said, no judgment. I won't get mad. Whatever. Speak your, speak your piece. You know, this is the time. Three, brother. Let's see. No. Absolutely. I think oh. every, first of all, everyone's lives matter. Especially black lives matter. I don't, I don't, I don't, there's a lot of things that bother me, you know, especially, you know, being with my other half and stuff, and then they look at us like, I'm like, but, but I don't understand what the problem is. We should all be equal. Mm. End of story, we should all be equal. Everyone yes. should have equal pay. Everyone mm. should get the same opportunity. I was recorded. No question. Or, you know, the, the, oh. the white person next to us. Right. Right? Everyone. Raise your hand. College is huge. Yes. Right? You want to get the same opportunity as everyone else, right? Why do some cops always think that they're better than Hello. 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 I like that question. Um, so remember, a lot of the cops that are around um, right. have, this is a culture shock. <laughs> and what I mean by a culture shock, you know, these kids, they, they were, you know, grew up in suburbia or whatever. And I'm not trying to knock anybody. Right. I'm trying to stretch the imagination. Sometimes they figure, once they put that badge on, I'm, I'm great. No, you're not. You're like everybody else. You just, you just have a badge. You have a gun, yeah, okay, you have a little bit of power, but that's it. <coughs> Doesn't make you any better than the person next to 